Hi everybody. The bad news is I'm not diving. I'm back in the Detroit area. It's 20 degrees, temperatures are dropping, and we got 10 inches of snow yesterday. But the good news is I finished shoveling my driveway and I'm going to show you some really cool ultra super macro images of some jawfish eggs, which I recently got on a trip to the Blue Heron Bridge in South Florida. So let's check it out. It's always fun to see jawfish when diving. Jawfish are usually seen with their heads peeking up from their self-made stony burrows. Sometimes we can see a jawfish with eggs in its mouth. My dive buddy spotted this one on a recent dive trip and took a shot with her compact camera. Here's the first image I took with my macro setup as I began my approach. I was lucky. We were shallow at 18 feet depth. There was minimal current. We were in the sand and rock so I could deflate my BC, settle in on the bottom without damaging any coral, and take my time and use a very slow and cautious approach. Here's a shot as I got a little closer. You can start to get a better view of the little embryos inside the jawfish eggs. After a jawfish mates, the male collects the eggs in its mouth and rotates them to keep them aerated and protected until they hatch, at which point the tiny fish swim off and fend for themselves. This is a side view, a little different view. For these shots, I used a Nikon D700 with Ikelite housing, single strobe with diffuser, a 60mm macro lens with 1.4x teleconverter inside the port. I also had a retractable plus 10 diopter wet lens mounted on top of the flat port for even more magnification in case the fish would allow a very close approach. I backed off any time I adjusted my strobe position or checked my camera's histogram so as not to alarm the fish. My camera settings were pretty standard for super macro. Lowest ISO, 100. Fastest shutter speed that would sync with the strobe, 1 to 200th of a second. And small aperture since we have almost no depth of field with super macro. I also set my strobe to TTL, but checked my camera's histogram every few shots to make sure the exposure was okay. Here's the strobe position I used for the first few images I showed when my camera's port was about 8 to 10 inches away from the jawfish. My strobe is above the port such as the, such that the lower edge of the light column illuminates the subject, but not much of the intervening water column so as to minimize backscatter. The red arrow shows the strobe and diffuser. The green arrow shows the flat port, which houses my macro lens and teleconverter. The blue arrow shows that the external diopter wet lens is retracted, in other words, not being used. Then, I decided to flip my lens over the port and tried to get even closer for some ultra super macro images. My dive buddy took a picture of me when I, when I was actually getting these shots. At the bottom of the image, the green arrow, you can see the jawfish with eggs only two to three inches away from my wet lens, the red arrow, which is now flipped in front of the port for greater magnification. My strobe position has changed. When this close, I must pull my strobe in really tight, actually touching the port, and angle it more downward so as to illuminate the subject. Using this setup, here are some amazing images from when I got really close to the jawfish. You can now see the tiny developing eyes of the little jawfish embryos. I used autofocus, then locked my focus and took several shots while rocking slightly closer and further away in order to focus on different eggs. In this image, you can actually see some of the small teeth in the fish's upper jaw, as well as the developing embryos. When I was this close, I stopped adjusting my strobe position and looking at my LCD because I didn't want to frighten the fish at all. When I looked at these images later that night in our hotel, I was shocked by the amazing detail visible. In this image, you can see the dark round central pupils in the tiny developing eyes of the embryo. These last two images are cropped somewhat, but were taken at the closest distance. The high magnification and resolution show fascinating details. Look at those dotted green and silver structures in the embryo eyes. I spoke with my friend and colleague, Dr. Ivan Schwab, an expert in eye evolution. He felt this might be guanine and might uh, provide camouflage to cover the RPE, the retinal pigment epithelium, which is the first pigmented tissue in a fish body. This pigment would make the tiny little fish highly visible to predators. The green dots and silvery color also probably represent the beginning of the tapetum, which reflects light back through the retina, increasing available light to the photoreceptors, thus improving vision in low light. This is my favorite shot of all. You can actually see the tiny crystalline lens and the cornea of the developing embryo eye. 
the minuscule spherical lens is seen protruding through the pupil at the tip of the black arrow. And at, in that same eye, you can see the tiny curved clear cornea, the green arrow, overlying the lens. To me, it is simply amazing to see such detail inside the eye of a live developing embryo of a jawfish in its natural habitat. And believe it or not, these photos were not really technically difficult to take. The main challenge was not to scare the fish. I approached really slowly and tried not to make any sudden movement when I was extremely close, even exhaling my bubbles very slowly. I hope you enjoyed those ultra super macro shots of jawfish eggs at the Blue Heron Bridge. I was really lucky to get that close. I was lucky that we spotted it in a shallow seafloor where I could be very cautious and patient in my approach and not stress the fish out too much. And I was also lucky to have a cooperative and patient dive buddy. I could have taken a few more shots of that little guy, but I really didn't want to stress him out too much. He was already stressed out from aerating those eggs and protecting the eggs. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you're interested in the eyes of aquatic organisms and you want to see more pictures, check out my book, The Aquatic Eye. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, thanks for your attention.